Voicemail. Carla! You don't think she's done something stupid, do you? I bet you a pound to a penny she's gone to the casino, got blooded and booked herself into a hotel in town. If you really think that, why are we hammering on a door at eight in the morning? Why'd you keep checking your phone? Um, well, because I'm expecting a call about a meeting later, that's all. I'll get it. Mm. Amy, no. Chrissy, what on earth's the matter? Dad, I just don't like her answering the door to strangers, that's all. It's never bothered you before. Look, Amy, go out in the yard and check that Eccles is all right. Why? Oh, good. Thank you very well, much. Well, because she was limping earlier and I think she might have hurt her foot. Perfect. That books have arrived. Can't wait to settle down with Mr. and Mrs. Disraeli. Mm. Uh, listen, Dad, you couldn't take Amy to school for me this morning, could you? It's just that I've got to get to the shop for a meeting. No, yeah, that's right. We could take Eccles. Mum said she's broken her foot. What? Oh, no, I didn't say that. I just said that she was limping. Well, which foot was it? It looks okay to me. What? Well, I don't know. Who do you think I am, Dr. Doolittle? That's what Todd calls you when you're not in the shop. <laughs> and that's more to do with your work ethic than your love of animals. Tracy, are you sure you're OK? Yeah. No, I'm fine. Just look after Amy for me, will you? Best behaviour today, right, big man? They'll be watching you like a hawk. Oh, he doesn't have to stay here. I said I'm sorry. It won't happen again, I swear. I'll just uh, put these away. When I was your age, I used to kick off all the time with my mum. Tantrums, shouting, screaming. But you never hit her, I get it. <sighs> anyway, my mum had this trick. When I kicked off, she'd ask our next door neighbour around. This old woman. She was like a hundred years old. As soon as she turned up, I stopped. You were scared of an old woman? <sighs> nah. Embarrassed. Embarrassed? I was so close to my mum. I reckoned I could have said anything to her and she'd forgive me. But with this old deer there and all, I couldn't do it. All the ranting and raving just felt childish. So what did you do? Go up to my bedroom and sulk like a self-respecting teenager. So in this scenario, you're the old woman next door? Scenario? I did Shakespeare last term. OK, in this scenario, I'm the old woman next door. Look, it's one thing going off at your mum. But when someone else is there, you kind of realise how out of order you've been. You still miss her? Every day. And nothing hurts more than remembering how I treated her back then. Right, who wants a boiled egg? I brought Ruby a card and a, a small gift. So there's a couple of Mr. Men books. Oh, that's really kind of you. Although we've told Ruby we're gonna have a party for her on Saturday this year because, um, you know, Fizz having to stop at the hospital with hope and that. Very wise, yes. It, it, it must be very harrowing taking your own child for a biopsy. Yeah, well, it's just a checkup. It's nothing to worry about. No, 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 not, not, nothing to worry about, of course. Oh, are you all right? You all right? Was Ruby OK? Yeah. You know what she's like. As soon as she sees all the little mates, she's off. <laughs> Roy's bought her a present. Oh, thank you, Roy. You look tired. Oh, it's that sugar coat, eh? The girls haven't been sleeping so neither have we. Why don't you allow me to drive you all to the hospital? Oh, there's no need. I insist. What's the point of me passing the test if I don't utilise my driving skills on occasions such as these? No, honestly, Roy, we're fine. You are anything but fine, either of you. We don't want Tyrone dropping off at the wheel en route. Well, like this, then. But Ruby and Hope mean a great deal to me. It would mean a lot to be able to help, albeit in a trivial way. Sorry, two seconds. Oh, I'm sorry your boiled egg wasn't enough. Well, I'm a grown lad. I need more than a boiled egg when I'm training. Oh, hi, Jim. You know, Peter's back from Antigua and I'm on. I'm just thinking, maybe Sai should go and stay with him for a bit. You know, just give us both a breather. What about school? Well, I'll just have to phone him up, won't I? <laughs> 
Okay. Listen, thanks for the support. I really appreciate anyway, it, you know. Listen, listen, How long is she going to be? I'll speak to you later. All right, all right. Try, 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 try. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What can I get you? What did they say? Went straight to voicemail. Oh, I'm sorry, Z. Go on, what do you want? What do you want? So what time are you going to fetch her? Well, oh, who's this? Miley. She's been naughty with her other grandparents. Yeah, we can't wait to see her, can we, darling? But with your audition, this is a big day for you, isn't it, love? All right, what's the show? Sound of Music. I want to play Maria. Oh, yeah, that's it. She's going for Maria. Yeah, and I'd happily watch you rehearse one morning, but I've got a job to get to, and... I'm sorry, I'm just in a bit of a hurry. Oh, it's all right, it's all right. Come on, sit down, watch you up. Cheese and onion on white. <laughs> Good luck for you, I'm sure you'll get it. Cheers. What time's the audition, darling? Half three. Oh, brilliant. Well, you can call in here after school, then, can't you? See Miley. OK. All right, lovely, Bill. I'll see you later. Come on, then, Edelweiss. <laughs> Edelweiss is a flower, not a person. Yeah, I know. He sings it to his daughter, don't he? What they call a metaphor. What are they teaching in reading class? Uh, never mind that. How come you know so much about the sound of music? Well, it's a timeless classic, isn't it? Oh, see you later. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Faye's coping well. Ah, oh, yeah, she is. You know, it's amazing isn't it? how kids can deal with just about anything. She's <laughs> What Should we say midday and we can sort out all the details? Yeah, um, great. I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> Hope that's new business. Might be. It's a mate from college. She's just landed a job at Channing's. A result? No one heard from Carla? No. She's gone AWOL. Have you tried the pub? It's half ten in the morning. <laughs> When's that stopped her? I'm sure she's fine. Just having a bit of trouble tracking her down, that's all. Well, how worried should I be? Just let me know if you hear from me, yeah? All right, Chris. Thanks for the discount. Yeah, it's fine. Faye's gonna love this. to the shop, for chance. Todd's with Jason in the hospital, and I've got a million things to do today. Yeah, fine. Everything's all right, is it? Yes, everything is absolutely fine. Well, yeah, Jason, Jason. <sighs> yeah, let me. Blimey. I mean, you said my ribs would hurt. I never thought it'd be this bad. <laughs> you think your ribs are bad? You won't get a whiff of these trainers. Calling Dr. Skull. I told you, my doctor's not called Skull. It's called Bernard. I've got the van outside. Um, he's my son, not a cement mixer. He's been very badly injured. An ambulance is only a van with a siren on top. Ma no, thank you. We'll get a black cap. He needs to stretch what? out. Why do you have to shoot down everything I suggest? Because everything you suggest is morally. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I'll out with Jason, shall I? The guy who's actually injured. I'll just leave him so I could do that, the bickering. Well, there's plenty more of that to look forward to when you get on. All I'm looking forward to. He's making sure these low lives who did this to me get what's coming to him. Yeah, well. Wow. Come on, kid. Lean on me. You drama queen. Oh, look who's talking. Oh, Todd, me poor ribs. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to overshadow the one with the massive disfiguring scar on his face, <laughs> do I? <laughs> What do you got to do to get a duvet day round here? All right. All right, blame me. I hate to see you meeting people off planes. Where the hell have you been? We've been worried sick. I'm sorry, all right? I've had to get my head around some stuff. I believe the night I've had. Why? What happened? I really like long stories. Come here. Nick's been on the phone all morning trying to track her down. She's still not turned up? She's gonna hurt herself. It's on you. You know that, don't you? <laughs> what, well, you think it's funny? That woman's in bits because of what you did. What if it's pushed her over the edge? Oh, that ship has sailed. She was about to top herself yesterday. Threatened to jump off a cliff. What? Yeah, I was there. But I did what you wanted me to do. I admitted it was me that started the fire and not her. So, where is she? Well, probably where I'd be if I was in her shoes. 
down the police station, spilling my guts. Well, soon as my baby left me. Sorry. Well, since my baby left me... All right, I'll get there. Don't give up the day job. Actually, I'm combining this with my day job. I'm going to be Weatherfield's new singing window cleaner, like a modern-day George Formby. Amy makes the grills? No, that's George Foreman. Yeah, and he's a boxer. I'm lost. Yeah, I think he is an old darling. Well, since my baby left me... Is it times like this that you wish Elvis actually would leave the building? Actually, this isn't for me. It's for Faye's audition. Oh, Sound of Music, yeah, Bethany mentioned that. Are you going up for a part? Nah. Said I wouldn't have minded being a soldier, but they said there's none in this production as it sends the wrong message to our European partners. Well, that's like doing Jaws without the sharks. Who's going to play the baddies instead? There are no baddies in this production, apparently. What? So who did the little kids run away from in the end? Your fair for guitar playing's as bad as yours. Oh, she's a <laughs> cheeky little mare, that one. Uh, there's still no messages from Joseph. Well, they're probably at home, zonked out asleep. Well, they can't still be asleep. The plane landed nearly 24 hours ago. Well, I've got a couple of jobs that way. I can call by and knock them up if you want. Oh, I don't know. Do you not think that's a bit pushy? Nah. Besides, I can't wait to see that beautiful little granddaughter of mine. Oh, I know me neither. And she tortured you all this time. She let you believe you were responsible for Callum Maddy. Yeah, well, that's Tracy Barlow, innit? The bitch that keeps on giving. You called the police? No, not yet. Well, you've got to. Yeah, but I've nearly done it a dozen times. It's just that he... It's her word against mine, isn't it? Right, but she's confessed, so you've got to report it. Yeah, of course you do. There's no evidence. She's just going to deny it. <gasps> Look, you cannot go through the rest of your life with Carl's family and the Websters all blaming you for something that's not your fault. Well, you just get off my back, both of you, OK? I need to think. What's there to think about? This... This has been preying on my mind for months now, OK? Can I not just have 24 hours to let it sink in? You're eating. Do you want me to make you something? I'm starving. There's only an eye mask and champagne in the fridge. Maybe we could go for the pub. Good knows I could do with a drink. Oh, thanks for coming round. Trish. Oh, maybe I should have left it till tonight. Well, there's no time like the present, I suppose. I don't know why you're so worried. He's always banging on about how much he misses his dad. Yeah, I know, but I don't want him to think that I'm sending him away. The last thing he needs is thinking that I'm rejecting him. Hiya. So what's the 911? The what? Emergency. Uh, Why is he here? I'm the old woman next door, remember? Uh, it's just Sani's, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm not going into care. Do you always jump straight into worst case scenario mode? What do you mean? I, I, why would you think that I'm sending you into care? Well, calling me back from school early, the sandwiches, him. It's not going to be anything good, is it? Sai. No one's died of this, not Grandad. No, listen, nobody's died. Put the kid out of his misery, will you? You're going to stay with your dad for a bit. Why? I thought you'd be pleased. Was this your idea? Me? Why would it be my idea? Look, I've already said I'm going to try harder now. You don't have to send me away. I'm not sending you away. Look, I spoke to your dad, and we both just thought a change of scenery might do you some good. Yeah, I can't believe you're turning your nose up at a holiday by the sea. I'll be there like a shot. And he really misses you, Si. And he's got loads of plans for the pair, yeah? He even mentioned borrowing his mate's boat and take you out on the water. Really? Yeah. Yeah, really. Look, why don't you go and phone him, eh? Talk it through with him? Yeah, OK. I've got enough room your side, Tyler. You've got plenty. Right up! I'm coming in at too wide an angle, that's the problem. Maybe it's just easier if we get out here. But I can't get out here. Yeah, we don't want to be late. I wanted to make today as stress-free as possible. Well, we're very grateful and thank you. Yeah. Shall, shall, shall I wait here for you, Tyra? I don't know how long we're going to be, so it's probably just easier if we get the bus, but cheers. Yeah, thank you. Good luck. Good, Good luck. Oh, well, that was terrifying. At least it took me mind off the hospital appointment. <laughs> Oi, 
Stick another one in there, will you? It's very early in the day to be getting bladded, isn't it? When I want advice on appropriate behaviour from somebody that gulped the duff at 13, I'll ask for it. Red wine, large. Speak of the devil. Leave it to me. I mean it. Can I have a large red wine, please? Hey. Just a normal excuse for me. I've got to go back to work. And hot pot as well, if you've got one going. Tracy, would you like a drink? I've got one, thanks. Sorry? I said I've got one. <coughs> thanks. Take a seat. I'll bring him over. Robert, Carl has just walked in. No, no, she hasn't set out. I don't know what she's playing at. <laughs> she seems much more herself today, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Proper little firecracker, aren't you, Princess, eh? Right then, is Hope ready? Yeah, I reckon so. Happened. Well, she's just sat there, staring at me as if nothing's happened. What can I get you? A pine best. Okay. Please. Okay. What are we going to do? Well, just stay with me when we finish this. If I dash out of there, it might look suspicious. So what? You're just going to style it out? Yeah. It's her word against mine, right? So you're just going to sit there, eating up pot, giving her evils, are you? For the moment, yeah. Call the police. I can't let her get away with it. Where have you been? Listen, I hold my hands up, OK? Yeah, I am sorry. It's our business, partner. It'd be easier getting hold of Michelle Obama. Yeah, but price is over now, OK? You can get me all caught up and you want to get Aidan a beer. At least she's going to meet us here. Good news, hopefully. Oh, why? Well, her mate works for Channings. She's been down there all morning. Reckon she's got good news. Oh, well, about time. That's it, is it? Business as usual. Like I said, Nick, about time. Could I get back to work? Shouldn't you be working, considering it's lunchtime? Uh, sous chef's got it all under control, boss. I, I just need ten minutes to taste a bit of sugar. What are you looking at? You know, I was asking myself exactly the same question. What do you mean they've gone? Well, there was an estate agent's board outside and when I rang the number, they said it was on as a rental. Oh, well, you'll have got the wrong house. It wasn't the wrong house. Oh, Chelsea, thank God. Uh, uh, listen, Tim's just popped round to yours and... Well, what do you mean? No, you can't do that. I'm sorry, is, is this some kind of joke? Josie, please don't do it. Please, please don't do that. Think of Faye. Josie. Hello? She's hung up. Well, what's up? Is my all right? They're not coming back. They never intended coming back. Tony, pay the driver. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you all right, Bethany? Over there? I have no idea. I don't know why you want me to come to this meeting with you. Because I want you to see something firsthand. You'll be glad you did. Oh, she's here. Good. Look, if she hasn't said anything now, she's not going to. Can I get you another one? No, fine. So, what's the big news? Well, give the girl a chance. Here, sit down. Do you want a drink? No, this won't take long. <clears throat> I'm resigning. Oh. Right. Can you tell me why? Because I got a better offer at McNeese. I've just been with them now. I thought you were at Channing's. I lied. McNee? And what does she want with you? Oh, you'll have to ask her. But you can be sure of one thing. I'm going to make sure Underworld never get another order with them. Alia. What? She killed our dad. If that drunken mess hadn't have fallen asleep like she did. Alia. 
You know, I do admire your tactics. I really do, actually. OK? And drunken mess. Yes, well, you're probably right there, you know. But I, um... I didn't start that fire. Did I, Tracy? Oh, how much have you had to drink? You started the fire. When you stole Michelle's keys and you broke into my flat. And you lit that candle. Is this true? No. Of course it's not true. She's off her head. Everybody knows that. Oh, it's true, all right. She told me all about it. She confessed it to me yesterday. Oh, the guilt must be eating away at you. Is it true? Our dad's dead because of you. She's making it up. And I don't need to listen to this. Come on, Robert. Tracy Barlow? Yeah. I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. What? You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? And we're back to Coronation Street tomorrow night at 8. Still to come tonight, they had their five minutes of fame, but what happened next? We've ITV changed my life. Then we're back with the Bobbies on the beat as all new The Nick continues at 9. <laughs>